dumbbell incline curl. So what we're looking to do here is hit the length and range of your bicep, which is going to be more that inner head, okay? And we're looking here to have the greatest tension in that length and portion of the rep. So we're using a bench that isn't quite vertical, gives you a little bit of lean back. The mistake people tend to make with these is that they put the bench far too declined. And then what you get is a lot of stress on your shoulder because gravity is pulling you outside that active range of motion. So we want to be with the elbow slightly behind the torso. That's what's going to help you hit that inner head of the bicep. But we don't want gravity pulling us to an awkward position with your upper arm. So for the double arm incline curl, you can stand up so that your hips don't get in the way to the same degree. We've got a good stretch at the bottom of the rep and we're squeezing in that shortened position. Thing to make sure here is that you don't come too far and let the tension drop off at the top of the rep. We want a good amount of tension throughout that whole range of motion. Now, with this movement, people's what's called carry angle, so the angle at which your upper arm moves relative to your torso varies a lot. So if it feels awkward having a completely neutral carry angle, so your elbow's pinned straight to side, what you can do is do a single arm dumbbell incline curl, move your hips out of the way, and then you get an uninterrupted path for that dumbbell with no internal stress on the shoulder. And you can use that other arm to stabilize you on the bench if you're a little bit stronger than I am and the weight's pulling you around a bit. 